Hey, coffee truckers. So we are getting started here on this espresso machine voyage. So, you know, the espresso machines, is a, it's a pretty tough subject to, uh, to break down. There's a lot of espresso machines out there and trying to narrow it down to which one to pick is, is going to be difficult. Um, so I did want to kind of go over a multitude of different espresso machines that I've seen the community go for, as well as some that I just personally like, um, and just kind of see if we can break down some characteristics on what makes a good espresso machine versus a bad. There's some terms that we should probably cover before we get started. Um, the first one is going to be your voltage. So that's 110 or 220. It's usually the kind of the first step into dividing espresso machines. Like, is it a 110, meaning is it household electric espresso machine, um, or is it a 220, a uh, industrial electric espresso machine? And the biggest, the biggest drawbacks to the industrial size or commercial espresso machines is that um, the the power usage that these guys have. So. You know, you're not going to be able to plug it into household electric. You're going to need a dedicated 220 line for it. If you're powering off of a generator, um, that means your generator is going to be a larger generator. When I was doing the research for generators, the smallest 220 generator I could find was 4,000 watts. Um, and that one, I, the reason I didn't like that one is because you had to hit a switch that um, either you had 220 or 110, you couldn't have them both at the same time. I felt like that wasn't a very good use of uh, for the mobile application. I felt like a better way to go would be something that you can have 220 power and 110 running at the same time. And that's because you got to, you know, work your grinder to pull your shot and then use the espresso machine. So the next step up from that was the 5,000 watt generator that I have from Champion. And that one you can use both the 220 line and the 110 line. That's the smallest generator I was able to find. I think it weighs like 123 pounds off the top of my head. It's fairly lightweight. Um, but what happens is you move up in wattage uh, for your generator, you're going to move up and wait pretty significantly. The next step from that was like the Westinghouse and that one jumped up to like 175 pounds. So I was a 50 pound increase right off the gate. You know, if you're a woman or a small frame man, that's going to be difficult to maneuver, um, let alone lift onto a truck. You're going to have to get a set of ramps. That means you're going to have to be laying out ramps, um, during the winter, or you're going to have to get it welded onto the frame of something. So, you know, the 220 espresso machines naturally means you're going to have a larger generator and so while you gain output out of your espresso machine you're also going to gain that loud generator unless you get the the honda and that's a 4000 watt generator there are some things like sam dampening that sound dampening that you can do um, i have videos on that on my youtube page that can help with lowering the sound but just kind of keep that in mind when we're exploring 220 versus 110. Now, some of the negative things to 110 or household um, electric espresso machines is that the, the steam output, you're going to have a smaller heating element and naturally a smaller heating element's not going to be able to steam as much water. So they're not going to have the volume output that you're going to have off a 220 machine. A 220 machine, you, you pretty much never have to worry about something like recovery time. Recovery time is when you spend all the water in your espresso machine, it refills, and then you have to wait for that water to boil again. That takes time. So if you have, you know, a small little machine, let's say you have uh, maybe a three liter or a four liter boiler and you use all of your water, not all of it, but, you know, a large amount of your water, you have to wait for the boiler to uh, bring that water back up to steam temp, that can be five, six minutes. And five, six minutes with a line of 10 is a very long time. So these 110 machines, you know, as far as, uh, as far as like their output, I've had 110 machines with like a two liter boiler and it can leave you hanging. You know, you, it can, 
And the problem with that is, you know, this is just my ex- been my experience is that when you do lose that steam output and you're not able to generate steam, you're waiting. And of course, if you have a line in front of you, you're waiting and you tend to push, you tend to try to operate the machine before it should be operated, which means you're going to be drawing shots with kind of colder water. They're not going to taste as good. So it really imposes on the quality of your of your product at that point. So, you know, you kind of want to be careful with the 110 machines because although you gain, you know, a quiet machine or a quiet generator, you then you you what you gain in in aesthetics, so to speak, you lose in functionality. So it's definitely a, a fine line that we have to walk. And you know, I'll try to make some guidance along the way towards that. But ultimately, if you're looking on doing like festivals, large crowds, big operations, you're probably going to want to move to the 220 machine. If you're going to be doing small farmers markets, a little bit of catering, or maybe a, a small venues, then you can probably get away with the 110 machine. Ultimately, I think any coffee catering business should have both. But the question is, which one do you get first? And that is ultimately up to you and your business plan. So, so those are the two big dividers, 110 versus 220. And then it, after that, it goes into group heads. So there's single group, which, which is just one portafilter. The portafilter is the little handle that comes off the espresso machine. Or there's two group, or sometimes you'll learn them called dual group, which kind of gets me confused. So two group machines have two handles, meaning you can draw two shots uh, at the same time. And when I mean two shots, I mean two double shots. So technically it's it's four shots at the same time. And so that's another way to kind of divide espresso machines and subcategorize them. Now there's a little bit more than that. There's dual boiler, which means that you have a boiler specifically dedicated to your steam and a boiler specifically dedicated to your brew, your, your espresso shot. Um, so dual boiler machines have two heating elements and they tend to be a little bit higher in energy uh, wattage usage because of that. Um, the two espresso, the, the two boiler systems aren't as popular as the single boiler systems. The single boiler systems use what's called a heat exchange. The heat exchange, basically you have one large boiler and within that boiler, You have um, a a copper tube or sometimes a steel tube that runs through the boiler just to get heated up. As it heats up, it will heat a little bit of water that you then use for brewing. Okay, so you use one boiler, but you run a tube through the boiler, tube goes to the brew head, and then the boiler itself will continue to feed um, the, the steam wand. So a heat exchanger versus dual boiler systems. I think that's important to use or important to know, excuse me. Um, the heat exchangers generally are lower in um, uh, wattage usage and generally have larger wattage, uh, excuse me, larger, larger boilers. And one of the things to kind of think about is steam output. And so when we talk about steam output, we just talk about the sheer amount of volume of steam coming out of the wand. And why that's important is because steam output equates to speed of cup. So how quickly you can produce one latte or one espresso drink, okay? Um, And it also equates to, um, so it's not, so steam output isn't necessarily just having a larger boiler. I used to think that's what it was, like you just, Okay, if you want more steam, you just need a bigger, you know, just a bigger steam boiler, right? Like bigger boiler. But it doesn't quite work that way because the ratio of the boiler um, in correlation to the size of the heating element is also important. So if you have a really large boiler and a really small heating element, you may be able to produce a lot of steam out the get go once the thing is heated up. But as soon as that steam is used up, then it's going to take a long time for that large boiler to reach its steam capacity again because it's got a little heating element. 
Um, the opposite is true if you have a very large heating element and a very small boiler. Um, you will get you'll you'll flash boil, like meaning like you will bring your boiler to a uh, to a, a high amount of steam rapidly. But then that means you're also going to be um, using all your steam very quickly, right? Because you have a small boiler and a large heating element. So there is a relationship between the two. Like all things, we must seek balance, right? You want to have something that has a decent sized boiler and a decent sized heating element so that you can get good steam output at the get go, but still be able to maintain it throughout the shift. If you get hit with a few drinks at once, you can handle those drinks at once and be able to recover the machine quickly. Um, so that's important the boiler versus the um heating element and and what their relationship looks like okay so i have some uh espresso machines that i wanted to go through today we're going to go through the La Mazorco line we're going to go through um the simonelli line um we're going to go through astoria um we're going to go through la spaziale um, la spaziale we're going to go through there uh specifically the vivaldi too a couple things from Rocket and a couple things from Rancilio. And so we'll go through those machines today and take a look at those and just kind of give some information and some feedback on, on those, those machines. So um, without further ado, let's get ourselves started on this. So I'm going to go ahead and present the window. There you go. Ta-da. Okay, great. So, great. All right, so let's just start off with La Mazorco. Okay, so La Mazorco, it's a US brand. Um, typically, it's considered a high end brand. They're very expensive in general um, and they maintain their, uh, uh, their, their resellability very well. They're kind of like, I think of them as the Toyota or the Lexus of espresso machines. That probably, probably the, the Lexus of espresso machines. Um, great machines um, for their 110 line. I did an interview with uh, one of the technicians from La Mazorco. Um, it went okay. I'll be honest, I did have a hard time getting some answers out of him. I'll post the interview and you can, you know, take it or leave it. But from what I got from the interview for the 110 machines, the uh, Linea Mini, this one right here, and the um, the GS3, excuse me. So this is the Mini. And the and the GS3, which is this one right here, are the main two contenders for 110 machines. And to be honest, they're pretty similar. Um, the GS3 was the first one to get put out, and from what I understand, they put this machine out. But the problem was that it hogged up um, the entire circuit, um, so it was a little bit more closer to a 20 amp circuit. And so if you had anything else on that line, um, or if you were running a 15 amp uh, you're trying to plug it into a 15 amp line. It kept get, giving home users a lot of problems. So they built this thing for a home user, okay? Um, trying to build uh, a machine that um, that you know that the uh, espresso enthusiast could could get into. Um, it does have the uh, dual boilers. So this is a machine that has two boilers. And uh, in the two boilers, you'll see here that the uh, steam boiler capacity is 3.5 liters. And in relationship to that, it has a 1600 watt element. So I think that's a pretty good little ratio. I imagine this thing puts out a lot of good steam power. Now, this particular machine does put more power into the coffee boiler. So remember, it has two boilers. And so... Um, it uses a full 20 amps. You need to be, uh, you need to have a full 20 amp line um, to be able to use this machine. And so, you know, I'm looking at the machine here, and um, I, I think it's it's absolutely beautiful. Um, but they tend to come with a with a pretty good price. Now, this compares. This runs pretty close to the Linea. Um, the Linea was their not necessarily upgrade model, but it was you know they went back and and fixed some things that they found that they ran into with the public and one of them was just their energy management so here's the linea this is probably the most popular one that i see of la mazorco in the coffee cart industry so if you're getting into coffee carts or coffee stands this one is probably what i see most frequently on like you know facebook instagram youtube 
And this one also has 3.5 liter steam boiler. So it's the same as the GS3 with a 1600 watt element, same as the GS3. But the difference is it doesn't run as much power to the, uh, to the, the coffee brewer. So it uses less power in general because the uh, coffee brewer, the, the group head uh, brewer, um, uses has a, a smaller energy requirement than the GS3. So basically their electrical footprint, they were able to decrease their electrical footprint. And again, beautiful machine. Um, this one's kind of a, you know, a top end brand. And so these are the two that La Mazorco uh, tends to recommend for the 110 espresso machines. Now an introduction or an introductory machine for them uh, for their 220 machine is going to be just the Linea. So the, the other one was called the Linea Mini. This is a Linea Classic. And uh, this is kind of the epitome of espresso machines right here. Like when I think of an espresso machine, this is what I think of. Um, they are, uh, excuse me, let me just make sure. Oh, okay. Oh, we're good to go. Sorry. Go back. Go back. Okay. They are, um, oops. They're just gorgeous machines. Again, two boil, two dual boilers. So you have two boiler groups, 4,600 watt element. And then that steam boiler is only seven liters. So this thing is going to have phenomenal steam output um, with, with ratios like that. Very powerful heating element, but also a very good size um, uh, steam boiler. Uh, their coffee boiler capacity is only 3.4. They require 30 amps for this particular machine, and it is 220 volt. So this is a, it's a bigger line, the 220, so you're gonna need a lot more power for this, okay? So, you know, 4,600 watts, that's something like, you know, you can buy a Champion or a Westinghouse generator, and that would feed this thing just fine. Um, you are right on the edge of what a Honda generator could power. Uh, Honda generators, they have two different circuits. One is dedicated for 110 and one is dedicated for 220. Um, and essentially, that's that's kind of a you know simplification of it, but that's basically how they divide it. And it's basically 22 amps per um, per circuit. So these guys being um, you know 4,600 watts are going to be uh, pretty close to that amperage. I think when I did the calculations, it sat at 20. So pretty close, um, but it, the Honda generator would still power this. I don't think you'll run into issues any more on that 220 line, and I don't think it will. So that's a, you'll probably max out that particular circuit. But very very beautiful machine. So you know how much do they cost, right? Um, you know digging around eBay, I found some used stuff. Like this is a used one. This is this recently serviced, 3,800 bucks. Um, that was the cheapest one I was able to find. Um, after that, you got like your, your Linea Mini here is 5,200 bucks. This one's brand new. looks like a, it's an online retailer. Um, Mazorco GB5, that's just one of their different models. Let's keep kind of scrolling down here. Another GB5, these guys have it now for 5,500 bucks. Um, so that's not bad. That's probably something I would look into. Here's your Linea Classic for 6,000. These are all used off of eBay. Um, this is another refurbished three group for 6,100 bucks. So you can see their, their resale value is, is, is pretty decent. You know, um, this is Whole Latte Love. And so basically just Whole Latte Love. Went to their website, clicked on uh, La Mazorco. And these are the, the two different ones that they bring up, the GS3 single group. And this one's the another GSC, uh, GS3 single group. This one has an auto function. This one's manual paddle. Um, I prefer auto functions. I prefer um, volumetric. Volumetric basically means that it's you push the button once. Um, Semi-automatic means you push the button twice, which means you have to start and stop it. Um, and I found that, that generally having to stop the shot can be difficult. Um, so I try to avoid those um, just because you can get hands free or you can get distracted. And I prefer to have like a hands free machine um, that just kind of shuts itself off automatically after a certain amount of 
uh, uh, coffee has gone through the filter. And so that's, you program that ahead of time, the volumetric stuff. So those are the ones I prefer. Um, so this one looks like that auto at 7,100 bucks, probably the only one I would really consider. The manual paddles, I mean, if it's not a volumetric, I don't, I don't really um, necessarily go for that because I know how valuable being able to do something else while you're pulling your shot is. All right, so this is Seattle Coffee Gear. And uh, so they have a Linea Mini that they sell for 5,400 bucks. And then their GS3 looks like it's 7,100 bucks. Six reviews, looks like only four stars out of those six. Let's just take a look, see what that um, negative review, if it even was a negative review. Um, yeah, here we go. Oh, they got nine reviews, so that's good. Okay, cool. And then so it did get some one reviews, so one stars. Um, so let's go take a look at the one star. Um, it says he's had it for three years and it's sputtering. He's only pulled two shots per day. Can't get it fixed. Mazorco did not provide service. No techs willing to make house calls. They only service commercial establishments. That makes sense. Um, they also recommend Shimi service once a year by a professional. Yeah, so, you know, if you've had it for three years and it sounds like this guy did not have any technical expertise, which I can almost guarantee that he probably didn't keep the machine clean, probably had bad water going to the machine. That's usually the case with um, with uh, espresso machines that go bad is the water. You know, there's some kind of corrosive water or something that will cause some type of buildup. So, you know, how much weight do I put on that review? Not much, you know, to be honest. You had the machine for three years, and it just sounds like he's having a hard time finding a technician. Fair enough. All right. So some more used stuff. This is Office Machine Depot USA. Uh, excuse me, Coffee Machine Depot USA. They got a couple of uh, La Mazorcos out here. They do have the Stratas, and then they have a Linea over here for $7,500. bucks. let us go ahead and click on that. So there's the, the Linea, and then it says MP, and so I'd be curious, mechanical paddle. Okay, yeah. So it gives barista full control over pre-infusion. That usually means that um, that you would probably have to be more attentive during the shot. Generally, I like to be more hands-off um, because I have other things to do when I'm uh, uh, working the truck, you know. So probably not one that I would go for, but, you know, it's good to know. It looks like they have some financing options. That's kind of cool. And Craigslist. Let's just check out Craigslist. So this is out in Denver. I was... I'm in Albuquerque, so I looked at Phoenix and uh, Denver. One's 500 miles, and I think the other one's 600 miles from me. So this is a Lomo Zorco um, out in Denver. Looks like it has four uh, four porta filters. So this is a four group. Um, has a brand new boiler. And that's kind of cool. Um, 32 to 37 amps. So this thing is going to be using a lot of juice. But it's running for five grand, and so that's not bad at all. So you can see that they tend to be, you know, used five grand, brand new, seven to ten. I think ten is probably going to be your introduction pricing. Let's just go back to Lomazorco and see if if they give us a price on the uh, on the Linea Classic. From what I understand, all their commercial stuff they send to um, dealers to sell. So I think they only sell their Linea Mini and their GS3, their residential line from their website or from their own salespeople. I think you have to go through a, um, like a coffee roaster or a online retailer or something to purchase their commercial stuff. But we'll take a look anyways. So just kind of scrolling down. Yeah, I don't see any prices. Bunch of maintenance stuff. Yeah, just a bunch of maintenance stuff. Pre a lot of preventative maintenance videos. That's really cool, but I don't I don't see any prices. So I imagine that this is something that you would have to purchase either from your local coffee roaster or from um, the uh, uh, like an online retailer or buy it used. Okay, so that's Mazorco. So let's move on from Mazorco. Let me just double check, make sure there's nothing I wanted to 
to cover. Nope, that's it. So on Mazorco, the two 110 options are the GS3 and the Linea Mini. And then the 220 option um, is the Linea Classic. And those are probably the best ones to take a look at for La Mazorco. Um, great brand, great company, really good resale value, but it is top of the line. So, you know, if you're starting off with low budget, it may not be a very good option. All right, so we're going to move on to uh, Salmonelli. Um, so this is the Salmonelli, and one of their lines that we're going to take a look at is their Appia line. Um, so they have a bunch of different espresso machines. I'll just go ahead and click on, uh, oops. So here's, yep, so here you have the Royella, you have the, um, the Appia, there is the Oscar, um, the Musica. The, the Oscar and the Musica are two that I've heard of um, a lot of issues, especially recovery issues with. So those are two that I'm just going to steer clear of because of the negative reputation they have. Um, however, the Appia Life and the Appia Life Compact are, are probably the, the best bets for Salmonelli. So let's dig into the Appia Life and the and the Compact. Okay, so this uh, this is the Appia Compact. It's a one. They have two different. They have a 110 and they have a 220. Um, so for the 110 model, it's a two group, which is kind of a bummer because that means that you're going to have a big boiler but a little heating element, and that's exactly what the spec sheet reflects, and that it has a 1500 watt heating element so you know a decent size for 110 but they don't change the boiler and make it smaller it's 7.5 liter boiler so the boiler is absolutely huge but if by chance you run out of um, steam on this thing it's going to be a long time before that thing recovers because of how huge that boiler is 7.5 liters is typically for a 220 machine but here they have it in a, in a 110 machine um, these things use heat exchangers, so naturally the boilers are going to be bigger. And that's because it uses one big boiler for both the group head and the steam wand, whereas La Mazorco, they had a steam boiler and a brew boiler. So, they, so the boilers are smaller because there's two of them on the dual boilers. On the heat exchangers, which is what this machine is, it's, it, most of them are going to have a larger um, heat, a uh, larger boiler, okay? All right, so that's this is the compact. That's the 110 two group. They don't have a one group. I wasn't able to find it. Um, but they do have a compact two group. And this machine is actually one of my top picks. I think this is a, a, a pretty strong candidate. And if you can find a good price on this one, I would encourage this is probably a good buy. Um, the reason why, so you have a 220 heating element. Okay, so you got a lot of juice going in, 3,000 watts on that size of the heating element. But the steam boiler is only 7.5 liters, so it's a pretty decent sized boiler. Um, 7.5, I think, is is you know if you think about it, that's you know you have a two liter Coke bottle. That's you know three Coke, three and a half, a little bit more, but three and a half Coke bottles. That's, that's big. You know, it's a lot of water. So your steam output is going to be good because you have a good size heating element and a fairly decent size boiler. It's not too big, not too small. It's right in that Goldilocks zone. So I think this is a I think this is a good machine. I think it's a very strong candidate. Um, they do so the compact versions are smaller, um, hence the name compact. So they have less of a physical footprint on your counter space. Then they do have what's called a full size, or what they refer to as a full size, and that's going to be these ones right here, the Apia Two, and and they call them the Life. So they'll say um, Apia Life model. It's it's kind of their full size model. So here's the Apia Life. This is their full size single group, and this one has a hundred uh, a fifteen hundred watts and a five liter uh, boiler. So it's a lot smaller boiler. Five liters is still a decent size. I think for their one group um, machines, this is probably the way to go. Um, the Apia Two. Um, I would probably pick this over. Uh, I would pick, so I would pick this one over the compact, even though the compact has a smaller footprint, the boiler's larger, and I think that's going to affect steam output in the long run. This one may have a slightly larger footprint, not by much, um, because it's only one group. But what's nice about it is that the boiler is smaller. So that heating element to boiler ratio 
is more in alignment with um, being able to put good steam output and have good recovery times. So uh, for for the Salmonelli, this is my pick for the 110 volt machine. I think this is probably the best way to go. And that's the uh, Apia Life or the full size one group. Okay. And then let's take a look at their full size two group. So here's the full size two group. And uh, this is uh, a 220 machine. Um, it, it has a uh, heating element of 3,400 watts. So it's a little bit more than the compact was. But the boiler on this one is 11 liters. So it's a, a much larger boiler than the compact is um, by nearly 30%. You know, so, um, so I think, but yeah, by, by basically a third, because the compact is 7.5 7 liters. And then this one is 11 liters. That's a big jump. Um, and then the heating element on the compact two group is 3,000 watts. But this one is only 3,400 watts. So you have a huge jump in boiler size, but not a huge jump in heating element. So um, for 220, uh, two group, this was not my my favorite pick. I would probably go with that compact model um, for the two group. So they have, just to kind of sum this up, um, Salmonelli has, they have two different models. They have the compact and the life, okay, or the full size, right? Compact and full size. Um, my pick for 220 is the compact. My pick for 110 is the full size, um, but take a look at their spec sheets and ultimately decide, you know, what you like. But um, I think these are good quality machines. I think they're very strong candidates for the mobile application. If I could find a decent price on a 222 group compact, I would take it. If I could find a decent size on the Appia Life One group, I would take it. So let's take a look at some prices and see what we can find here. Okay, so this is just Salmonelli's website. Again, volumetric is what I'm going to pick for the style. Um, I'm not going to get any special add-ons like the auto steam or anything like that. Um, let's see. This is the compact, and I like the two group. So let me just make sure it is the two group. It is. Great. Yep, so that's the compact two group. It looks like brand new coming out of the gate. Um, oh, hold on a second. Okay. Looks like, oh, they have a big warranty here. Okay. There's a bunch of different warranties. 650 for your starter warranty. Your gold warranty is 950. Standard dealer warranty is zero. I'm going to just say zero. Okay. So 7,000 bucks brand new. Cool. All right. Let's take it the other one. Let's take a look at the other one that I like. <clears throat> this is the IPA Life. Uh, this is the volumetric. Um, let's take a look at the one group. That's the one that I like for this one. Okay, no steam. And let's take let's just knock it down to no warranty. Compare apples to apples. And this one comes in at forty nine hundred bucks. So it's a nice introductory model, I think. And then as far as used, let's see what we can find used. So this is eBay. Um, in eBay, I just put Salmonelli espresso machines, organized it from low to high, and just made sure it was commercial machines. And then this is what I'm seeing. I'm seeing the Oscar, but again, I'm not into that one, so I'm going to just skip over that. Um, looks like they have a Salmonelli Program Plus. I'm not quite sure what that is, but at 800 bucks, I think it's worth taking a look at. So let's just crack that one open. Okay, this one's coming out of Michigan. And they don't know the working condition. Everything looks in order. So, you know, this is something if I were looking into this machine, I would contact my um, espresso technician. Then I would find out what it would cost to replace the boiler and the heating element. Just assume the whole dang thing is wrong, right? And, you know, add that to the price. And, and you can get yourself a working machine for, you know, pretty inexpensive. This is three groups. That's yeah, kind of a lot. It's kind of a bigger machine. Let's take a look at what else they have. Let's just keep scrolling down. So here's the Salmonelli 2. 
two steam wands. Okay, that one's running for 1200 bucks. That's not bad at all, but it doesn't look like it's programmable. So I would be skeptic to that. There's the Oscar again. I try to steer clear of those. Seminelli 2 group again does not look programmable. So I'm going to just keep scrolling on down. And here we go. We're starting to step into some decent Seminelli's. That one's 1600 bucks. There's the Appia 2, 1700 bucks. There's a two group right there for 1400 bucks. So, you know, there's some decent used espresso machines for the Salmonelli. Looks like they probably don't hold their value as much as the La Mazorco, but that also means that you could probably get started for significantly cheaper, which is a good thing. Okay. Um, all right. So just looking, this is uh, Espresso Outlet. I just want to give a shout out to these guys. Um, Joe is the owner of this company. He's been, he's at, yeah, he's answered a ton of questions for me over the, um, probably the last six months to a year. Um, so, you know, he has his Appia Life single group for 4,900 bucks. Um, and looks like he does do some type of business financing. And if I remember correctly, he does a lot of um, package deals where you can get like, a, you know, discount off of your grinder and stuff. So, um, you know, if you're going to be buying your grinder as well, you might want to look into seeing what you can save there. And let's see, Craigslist. Okay, so we did a search on Craigslist. Did one for Denver and Phoenix. This was the only one I was able to find. I got one out in Phoenix. Looks like a three group out there for two grand. Um, is it in working order? Just says there's no warranty. So, you know, it's kind of one of those things as is. Okay. All right, so that's all the Salmonelli stuff. So do I have any more Salmonelli? I do have more Salmonelli, excuse me. Um, this is commercialmachinedepotusa.com. They have an Appia 1 and an Appia 2, an Appia Compact. So there's that machine that I, I tend to like. Is that the two group? Yeah, look at that. So that one's running for 4700 bucks. Looks like a pretty good deal right there. So, um, yeah, so you look around, you can probably find some used stuff there. But I do like that machine. That one's the one that I tended to favor, the Appia Compact 2 group. That's the, the machine I liked. So, okay, moving on to Astoria. <clears throat> so this is Astoria. Um, this is the machine that I have experience with, um, probably the one that I tend to favor, but that's just because I, I, I don't have any experience with Salmonelli. But to be honest with you, it's probably a brand I'll end up picking up in the future. And if I see a Loma Zorco at a good price, I'll probably snag that one as well. So uh, the Gloria is, they have a bunch of different ones, but the Gloria is the one that I, I feel was probably the best candidate for the mobile application. So there she is there. Let's kind of dig into the Gloria and kind of take a look. They come in two different colors, black and silver or chrome. Um, all right. So for the 110 machine, they have a 2000 watt um, with 5.2 liters, um, which is very comparative to that Appia Life. Um, it's got a little bit more juice in it though than the uh than the appia or the the 110 machine from salmonelli so this one i would say probably beats that one out um it, it is a heat exchanger just like the salmonelli's are it's not a dual boiler uh for their 220 they have uh let's see so this is their 110 uh, 5.2 liters and 2000 watts and then their two group 220 is uh, nine liters and then it runs uh, 4,400 watts. So it's it's more powerful than the compact, than the Appia, um, but it does have a bigger boiler. So, you know, it's, I would say it's, it's probably runs neck and neck with the Appia compact from Salmonelli, um, but this one probably is gonna have a stronger steam output just because it is running 4,400 watts which is um, significantly larger than the 3,000 watts out of the Apia Compact. So, um, you know, strong candidate, um, which is one of the reasons I like Astoria. They're, they're really good machines. They're literally workhorses. They, they can uh, really put out some volume. Um, they have a, let's see, this is Prima Coffee. Um, they have a Gloria that they're running. Uh, their two group is... 6700 bucks so 6700 
$29.99 is what they're running. Looks like they do have a, a financing thing as well. Um, Caldi is another group I'm uh, familiar with. They have one running. Uh, this is a two group automatic Gloria. So great. That's what I'm looking for. And uh, $6,741 or 189 a month. So it looks like they do have some financing available as well. Uh, let's go to eBay. Um, so looking at eBay. Uh, looks like there's a Gloria out there for $2,700. I'm not sure the working condition of it, but, you know, that's that's great. Let's click on that. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, so that's out of West Virginia. And a uh, bunch of different videos here. Gorgeous machine. Real real beautiful machine. And let's see. The cost on this is um, $2,700. They don't have much in their description. So... You know, you'll probably want to write them and just kind of see the history of it if you can. But as you can see, you know, it's uh, they're out there for, you know, fairly inexpensive. Two thousand dollars, twenty seven hundred bucks for a two group machine. I think that's that is a deal. Um, and then looks like there's the two group volumetric at sixty two hundred bucks. So someone on eBay um, has a pretty good deal on those brand new. All right. Moving forward, let's see. Oh, this is um, uh, uh, Coffee Machine Depot USA. And they did have a, a San Marino, which is a uh, type of uh, kind of a branch off from Astoria. Rio is another branch off from Astoria. Um, the, I'm not 100% on the differences, to be honest. Um, but I do know that they all come out of the same company. So thought I'd point that out. They got theirs. This is... Looks like it's out of stock, but they did have one for $2,900. Great deal. And that looks like a three group machine. I'm not quite sure um, what the uh, boiler and all that is, but um, looks like they did have some uh, machine. They, they did have some decently priced machines. So at the time of looking at this video, you might want to give them a, a look and just see what they have in for stock. All right. So Astoria makes one other machine. They make the product Avant. It's kind of their cheapy. Um, it's a good machine though. I mean, you know, it's less expensive, but I don't think it's a, a junky machine by, by any means. It's just not flashy, you know, so you can see it there. That's, that's a, you know, that's their product Avant. And the one group is 2,200 Watts with a six liter boiler. Um, so pretty comparative to the Gloria 2,200 Watts. You really got to start looking out, um, to see if it's going to trip your, your uh, circuit so you know just be careful buying the one group product Avant because if you try to plug in that into 15 amps or something you're going to pop your circuit all day long um, they do have a two group and their two group machine let me pop that on is uh they have a 3600 watt uh two group with 10.5 liters and then here on their website with this model it's 4800 watts and this one's 10.5 liters so it looks like they had some adjustments to their models over the years. So just kind of, you know, when you're purchasing, if you're purchasing used, then you'll have to look at what model it is and specifically the size of the boiler. Um, but, you know, 3,600 watts with 10.5 liters, a little bit big on the boiler um, for such a small heating element. Um, I can see why they moved up to 4,800 watts um, and 4,400 watts for that heating element because, um you know, they probably ran into some steam outputs on their earlier model, steam output issues on their earlier model. But these uh, these later models or these newer models, so to speak, these latest models look like they, they fixed that issue. So that's so that's good. So of the Astoria, um, you know, the Gloria and uh, both the 110 machine and the two 220, I think, are, are great machines. Um, so far, if I had to pick, they're probably going to be the ones that I pick again you know I'm, I'm used to Astoria so I do have a slight bias but just specifically going by the numbers they have more uh, a larger heating element a larger a little bit of a larger boiler um, and so I, I do like that um, okay so let's move on from these guys I did want to co cover a couple other ones oh this is just product Avant um, this is their spec sheet I was digging into product Vaughn. I just had a hard time with the different models. It looks like they've made multiple changes over the years. Okay. 
some more product Avant stuff. Um, this is voltage coffee supply, uh, product Avant volumetric single group for 3,700 bucks, brand new. Uh, threw this one into eBay. Looks like they don't have any used. The stuff's all brand new. Okay, so this is the other one I wanted to cover, the La Spaziali, um, the Vivaldi 2. And so I get a lot of, uh, I see a lot of this particular machine um, and a lot of interest into this machine. And I think for fairly good reason, for a 110 machine, I think it's a pretty decent competitor. It is a two boiler system. So it's very similar to La Mazurco in that aspect. And it has a uh, 1,250 watt heating element and 2.5 liters for the steam boiler so you know the ratios there look pretty good you know steam boiler to uh, wattage to steam boiler i think that's a, a decent um a decent size uh boiler um 2.5 liters you know um it's a little bit on the smaller end um but with 12 1200 watts to heat it up i think you're, you're going to be in some decent shape um I have heard recovery issues with this one, um, meaning that when you run out of steam, it takes you, you have to wait for for the uh, heat heater, the boiler to recover. And with such a small um, boiler, the uh, 2.5 liters, I think that you're probably gonna run into that fairly often. You know, compare that to some of the other 110 machines, the Gloria has a 5.2 liter, which is literally more than double. Um, the Appia Life has a 5 liter, which is literally double. Um, and then the Linea Mini has a 3.5 liter um, and a larger heating element. So, you know, comparatively speaking, this doesn't quite stack up to the other ones, but I do see a lot of people look at this particular one. Um, you know, is it something that I would base my business on? I got to be honest with you guys. I would probably just go with either an Astoria or a Salmonelli if I was running low on funds. I don't think the thousand bucks is worth it, um, specifically since you can find some pretty good models out there for roughly around the same cost. So let's dig into, um, oh, here's the, here's the owner's manual, dual boiler system. So won't go too far into that, but. Let's see. Was I able to find any decent price ones? Yeah. So this one right here is fifteen hundred bucks on um, eBay used. So that's not bad, fifteen hundred bucks. But again, I, you know, I would. It's tempting, you know, because you go, ah, it's only fifteen hundred bucks. But I mean, if you can scrounge up just even an extra five hundred bucks, a thousand, I think you're probably going to get a, a much a significantly better machine. So. Not something I would recommend. It's not a bad machine either, but it's not, you know, I just feel like for me personally, I think my money could be better spent. A little, I can get a little bit more bang for my buck going to one of the, the other mentioned machines, but did want to cover it because I do see a lot of folks have interest in it, but I also wanted to cover why it's probably not something I would go for. And really it just comes down to the low wattage and the low um, uh, steam boiler size. So, all right. All right. So here's another one. This is uh, the Ranchilio. So the Ranchilio, uh, the Sylvia's is a very popular home machine. So naturally people that are comfortable with it at home tend to have some interest in it at the commercial um, environment or the commercial use. So a uh, dual boiler machine. Um, but pretty small boiler. Um, so when we scroll down here, you have a one liter boiler. So it's even smaller than the, uh, than the, uh, the, of uh, Vivaldi 2. So of, of all of them, I think this one came in with the smallest boiler. 1300 watts, uh, which means that it's probably going to heat up, you know, decently. Um, I don't know exactly how quickly, but, you know, that's, it does have very, a, a decent sized boiler in comparative to a, a pretty small, um, it has a decent sized heating element, 1300 watts, but a, but a small boiler. So you will probably run out of steam often, but the, the pro is that it will probably heat up 
faster than some of the other ones. Um, but you know, because of the small boiler, this is one that I, I probably won't recommend. Um, just sticking to uh, Ranchilio, I did talk to. Oh, okay. Excuse me. Sorry. Here's here's eBay. You can find on eBay. Um, this was this was the Ranchilio Pro. They do. This is back to C Seattle Coffee Gear. Sorry for bun bumping around here. This is just their regular machine, 750, because um, they have they have a couple different models of the Sylvia. You see the the PID and then the um, Sylvia Pro. And so yeah, so here's a couple different models, and this one's just a single boiler system. Not something I'm going to recommend for um, commercial use. I think I think if you bought this for commercial use. I think you're going to run out of steam very quickly and very often um, because it's a small machine. Probably a great machine for home use, but probably not something for commercial use. Okay. And that's what these guys, these cheapy $400 ones, that's what those guys are. And so that's the reason why larger espresso machines or more expensive espresso machines kind of justify their cost because on these small machines, you're just, you're going to just run out of steam. Guys, let me tell you from experience, it sucks to run out of steam on an event. You know, you when you book the event, these people ask, well, how many drinks can you do per hour? We're going to book you for the lunch hour. We have 50 clients. We'd like you to do 50 drinks in an hour. And then when you get there and you're able to only produce 20, it really looks bad on you. So something like this i just i just don't i can't justify it for the business uh, i can certainly justify it for home use it's 400 bucks well spent for you know just me and my wife or me and friends or something like that absolutely but you know for for commercial use it's not something that i'm going to advocate for um i did talk to um seattle coffee gear um and uh asked about a few different um machines this is they, they recommended a few different ones. So one of the ones they recommended was this one right here from Ranchilio. This is the class five USB. Um, and so this one is a single boiler system. And it's, uh, let's see, it's 1600 watts with four liters. So fairly large um, boiler size, which is good. Um, and then what was really interesting about this one is that if you look right here, it's got a steam wand on this side and a steam wand on this side. I thought, man, that was kind of interesting. So, um, so that's that's this particular one. Um, you know, for the cost though, I mean, it's that's a pretty pricey one right there, sixty nine hundred bucks. I would probably for sixty nine hundred bucks, I'd probably look for another machine to be honest with you. But um, this was their recommendation. And then uh, let's see. Comparatively, when I was going through, I found that it stood up. Let's see if I can find it. Sorry, I'm getting a bit ahead of myself. Ah, um, the the Ranchilia also made this one, which is a Class 5 ST, and this one looked a little bit more. Um, you know what? I might be mixing two machines up. Let me just go back. Eat a little crow if I am. Give me just a second. No, okay, yeah. So the boiler is four liters. I'm sorry. Yeah, so that's absolutely right. The boiler's four liters. And then this is the other one that I looked at. Um, a little bit cheaper, um, the 5ST. You don't get that two steam wand thing that the first one had. Um, but, you know, it's it's got uh, four liters for the boiler and 1,600 watts. So it's pretty much in alignment with the other one, but a lot cheaper. So this was the one that... that of the Ranchilio was probably the one that I thought um, made the most sense. Um, and the other ones that I wanted to cover was the Rocket because those do get a lot of attention. Um, going back, this was the recommendation from Seattle Coffee Gear. Uh, they like the box, the boxer timer. Um, again, this one has that um, two uh, steam wand uh, function, which is kind of cool. Uh, let's see, 1,700 watts and a whopping 8.3 boiler volumes. That thing is huge. 
So, I mean, 1,700 watts and a big boiler like that, I think it's going to take it a while to heat up. But, I mean, once it does heat up, it's going to have a good amount of steam. But, yeah, that is a lot. That is a huge boiler for the uh, for the size of that heating element. Um, so, for that particular reason, it's not something that I'm going to stand behind. But this was the one that they did that Seattle Coffee Gear, uh, Seattle Coffee Gear favored. Um, and, you know, to be frank and honest here, it's 4,500 bucks. When I looked at the um, apart Apartamento, this one's only 1,600 bucks. And I said, well, you know, this is double the cost, you know? I said, okay, well, let's take a look at this one because this is probably the, the, the most frequent one that I see on the blogs and Instagram and whatnot. So digging into this one, I said, oh, let's take a look at it. It's 1,200 watts for the uh, heating element and 1.8 for the um, the boiler volume. So, you know, this one made a little bit more sense to me as a 110 machine. Um, I will let you know, I've heard some kind of negative stories about their customer service, but maybe that's just, you know, from the blogs and whatnot. Um, when I did look up uh, apartment or excuse me, Rockets, um, when I went to their website, I wasn't able to contact anyone. It looks like this one is, um, out in Italy. So I would probably purchase this from a local group. That way I could get good customer service from my local group. So, um, so here you have Seattle coffee gear sells them for 1700 bucks basically. And here online, I've just threw that into eBay and I'm seeing one right here for 1200, 1300 bucks. So, you know, fairly inexpensive. Um, so all in all, all right, so those were the the big major contenders for espresso machine. Um, you know, after doing this research, the um, I've I've always been a big fan of Astoria, uh, but after doing the research, I do have to say that the Salmonelli and the La Mazorco definitely have caught my attention. And I am now on the lookout to see if I can find one of those machines used. Um, some people always ask, like, should I buy my machine used or should I buy it brand new? And you know, I usually just say. Buy your machines like you buy your cars. If you buy your car new because or fairly new because you can't stand having to deal with a car breaking down, you don't like to be stranded. When you get into your car, you want to know every day that it cranks right on. You should probably buy your espresso machine new um, because those type of things like a car breaking down or espresso machine breaking down is really going to probably cause a lot of um, anxiety. And it's probably not something that you're going to want to deal with. Um, I'm I'm on the other I'm on the other side of the fence. I tend to like to tinker, right? Um, so I will often look for, you know, like for cars where I can see something that I can replace pretty easily and try to get a deal on it, right? Um, that's bit me in the butt before, um, but that tends to be my personality type. I tend to look for things that I can be hands on with um, because I enjoy the the I enjoy fixing things. I enjoy learning about how things work and how they tick. So if you're like me and you like tinkering a little bit, then you may be a good candidate for buying a used machine. But just keep in mind the risk associated with that is that you may be left without a machine. Ultimately, I highly recommend at some point having both a 110 machine and a 220. As your catering business, you're going to want to be able to do both festivals and weddings and the machines will justify their expenses. So I'm gonna highly encourage that at your earliest opportunity to reinvest into another machine. And it just gives you a wonderful backup in the event that a machine's not working, you have another one and it works great. It also gives you two different tools to be able to apply to two different environments, both indoor and outdoor catering. So that's my take on espresso machines. Um, you know, there's a lot coming out and I'm sure I missed some. Um, so we're going to just use the comment section of this video. And if you have questions about them, um, feel free to throw in the questions. Now, guys, I'm not going to do a review on every cheap espresso machine you find on eBay. So let me just point that out right away, because often what I get put in the place of is people are looking into machines. and They'll say, what do you think about this one? What do you think about this one? And I probably get five of those a day. And I'm like, I, I just don't have the time of the day nor the interest to look into every espresso machine that someone finds a good deal on. You know, it's like 
the characteristics of the machine should be you're going to want to find something that has a good heating element versus steam boiler ratio ask your local technician about it you know call up your local technician and ask if they like that brand of machine they're going to know way better than i do you should also know your local technician's first name and what type of beer they like because you're going to be bringing them some beer right so ultimately what i would like to do is I, I definitely encourage that you know if there are some machines out there that are getting popular or we're seeing something step into the horizon yes by all means let's get digging into the research on that and i would encourage using the comment section for that but what i do want to just put a cap on right away and just kind of be frank with my boundaries is that i don't want to dig in personally into you know every good deal that comes along on ebay because otherwise it will eat my time um, as far as Astoria goes, um, I have a wholesale relationship with Astoria. I don't sell any machines. I mean, I had some on the website, um, but you know, they they never move. They're people that just have way better prices than I do. Um, but I do get my uh, parts at cost. So if you're running into something and you need a part, um, by all means, please feel free to reach out. Let's get you that part, okay? All right, I hope it helps, and thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, the next section of this will be espresso machine grinders.